Host country national trainers and FISCO trainees, soon to be volunteers, a warm good morning to each and every one of you participating in this swearing in ceremony from the Nature Isle Studio in Dominica, Public Workers Union in Grenada, Frances House in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and the Bay Gardens Hotel in St. Lucia. Bonjour tout le monde, good morning. I'd like to move the motion that this protocol be accepted as read. Thank you. On behalf of Peace for Eastern Caribbean, I take this opportunity to welcome you to this ceremony in honor of the 94th group of Peace Corps volunteers to serve in this region. Today, following a long and proud tradition established since 1961, a cohort of 17 trainees will pledge their commitment to serve as literacy resource volunteers in the Eastern Caribbean. It is indeed a momentous occasion that we all are elated and proud to witness. Trainees, thank you for your commitment and sacrifice as you take your first steps in helping us support the common goal of improving students' literacy performances in the Eastern Caribbean. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, a warm welcome to this virtual swearing-in ceremony. Dear welcome guests, dignitaries and volunteers, please allow me to adopt the established protocol and greet everyone present here today. Special thanks and welcome to our distinguished government representatives, and guests from the countries where Peace Corps volunteers serve, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines. Today is a significant day for the 17 Peace Corps volunteers who are here with us, since they have chosen to serve in the Peace Corps, hoping to make a difference. Following nine weeks of intensive training in preparation for service, the volunteers will now move to their communities and continue to learn about Eastern Caribbean culture, to support literacy at schools, and engage in community service projects. During the two years of their service, the volunteers will share their U.S. diverse culture and backgrounds with the students in their communities, will make many Eastern Caribbean friends and will establish a lifetime connection with this region. Every volunteer is drawn to this journey by a different motivation for service. From interest in international development to a desire for exploration to pas passion for immersion in a new culture. Overarching all these motivations is the desire to engage in service, to do something larger than oneself, and to make a difference. I'm here reminded of the inspiring words of Maya Angelou, who said, I quote, to make a difference is not a matter of accident, a matter of difference of the tides. People choose to make a difference and congratulations for a choice wisely made. The volunteer's choice for service in the Peace Corps draws upon some of the finest traditions of our, our, our American culture to volunteer in support of communities and to engage citizens in civic participation. It has been 16 three plus years since President John Kennedy and the first Peace Corps Director Sergeant Shriver sent the first Peace Corps volunteers overseas for their two years of service. From the onset, Peace Corps was the aspiration of visionaries who could see the possibility of individuals working together to build cultural bridges and understanding and how this could become 
a powerful instrument for world peace through friendship. And since that day, many Americans have served in the Peace Corps with honor and dignity. The volunteers here today are the modern practitioners of that same leg legacy. Having the volunteers in the field is a major sign that we are collectively looking at a brighter future. Teaching English remains critical for young people to advance academically, socially, and professionally. Today, the world is also starting to recognize that the climate crisis is here to stay in each of our country's shores. We all feel the urgent need to act in ways which connect youth to opportunities so that they can drive change in their communities. And what a momentous time to be here in the Eastern Caribbean, so that we can root and cheer alongside our local partners for the recent fabulous achievements in the world of sport and the Olympics 2024. The gold medals of Ms. Alfred of St. Lucia, the gold medal for Ms. Thea Lafont of Dominica, the bronze for Mr. Karani James from Grenada, as well as the participation of the first Vincentian athlete to the Olympics, Ms. Shafika Maloney, all these amazing individuals who are now breaking ceiling and putting the countries of the Eastern Caribbean on the world map of world sports. And we are here so happy and proud to be sharing with you all these momentous moments of sports glory and joy. Here, in the Eastern Caribbean countries, we owe it great to the national governments and the ministries of education, our partners, who have made Peace Corps work possible. We are also very fortunate that the communities are opening to work with us after the distress of the pandemic and in the face of increased natural disaster challenges. I thank you all today for all your support of the volunteers and the Peace Corps program. My appreciation and thanks goes to all school administrations and their staff, supportive agencies and vendors, trainers and community members, host families, who welcomed and supported the volunteers during the nine weeks of pre-service trainings. Kudos to the Peace Corps staff who guided and supported trainees to build the confidence they need for successful volunteer service. Making connections, building networks, and trust with local partners is at the heart of what Peace Corps is and has been throughout the decades. Dear national and community partners, the greatest accomplishment of the volunteers will come through the ongoing efforts to work collaboratively towards common goals. The quality of the volunteer services directly related to the energy optimism, and tenacity these partnerships will emanate. That's the magic which accounts for the success of Peace Corps service globally and here in the Eastern Caribbean. And dear volunteers, the service you're about to enter will take you different places over the course of the next two years. If you serve with dignity, respect, humility, grace, and gratitude for your host partners and communities, you will make yourself, your families, Peace Corps, and our country proud. And in closing, I wish that your experiences are just as rich and rewarding as those of many Americans who have served before you. Embrace the opportunity for service in the Eastern Caribbean as the hallmark of time well spent and enjoy the sheer joy of making the effort. Congratulations and good luck. My name is Franz George and I am the program and training manager in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It is my pleasure to present today to the country director of Peace Corps Eastern Caribbean, the government, and the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, these two trainees. 
They have successfully completed the pre-service training requirements and demonstrated the competencies needed for volunteer service. Trainees, please stand as I call your name and please remain standing. Mr. Grayson Summerhill from the state of North Carolina. He will be serving as a primary literacy resource volunteer in the parish of Charlotte. Miss Kylie Williams from the state of Maryland. She will be serving as a primary literacy resource volunteer in the parish of St. Patrick. I now call on Carol Noble, Miss Carol Noble, Program and Training Manager of Grenada, to present the trainees to the government and people of the Spice Isle, Grenada. Good morning, everyone. My name is Carol Noble, and I am the Program and Training Manager in Grenada. It is my pleasure to present today to the Country Director of Peace Corps Eastern Caribbean, the government and the people of Grenada, these four trainees. They have successfully completed the pre-service training requirements and demonstrated the competencies needed for volunteer service. Trainees, please stand up as I call your name and please remain standing. Heather Thornton from the state of Virginia. She will be serving as a primary literacy resource volunteer in the parish of St. David. Jenna Neitzel from the state of Florida. She will be serving as a primary literary resource volunteer in the parish of St. Mark. Sophia Maya from the state of Maine. She will be serving as a primary literary resource volunteer in the parish of St. Andrews. Adeline Triplett from the state of New Mexico. She will be serving as a primary literacy resource volunteer in the parish of St. Patrick's. Thank you, Ms. Noble. The Program and Training Manager from Dominica, Mrs. Lancasha Joseph John, will now present the trainees to the government and people of the Nature Isle, Dominica. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lancasha Joseph John. I am the program Programming and Training Manager of Dominica. It is my pleasure to present today to the Country Director of Pisco Eastern Caribbean, the government and people of Dominica, these four trainees. They have successfully completed the pre-service training requirements and demonstrated the competencies needed for volunteer service. Trainees, please stand as I call your name and please remain standing. Chloe Bilak from the state of Kentucky will be serving as a primary literacy resource volunteer in the West Education District. Aubrey Stewart, from the state of California, will be serving as a primary literacy resource volunteer in the South Education District. Sherelle Yance, from the state of California, will be serving as a primary literacy resource volunteer in the South Education District. Max McBride, from the state of Massachusetts, will be serving as a primary literacy resource volunteer in the South Education District. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Joseph John. I now invite Ms. Shamon Jules, the Program and Training Manager of St. Lucia, to present the trainees to the government and people of the Helen of the West Indies, St. Lucia. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Shaman Jules, and I am the Program and Training Manager in St. Lucia. It is my pleasure to present today to the Country Director of Peace Corps Eastern Caribbean, the government, and the people of St. Lucia, these seven trainings. They have successfully completed pre-service training requirements and demonstrated the competences needed for volunteer service. Trainees, please stand up as I call your name and please remain standing. Diane Tanglekate from the state of California. 
She will be serving as a primary literacy resource volunteer in Education District 1. Heather Ault from the state of California. She will be serving as a primary literacy resource volunteer in Education District 1. Hunter Kazazel from the state of Pennsylvania. He will be serving as a primary literacy resource volunteer in Education District 3. Joseph Habighaus Clement from the state of Missouri. She will be serving as a primary literacy resource volunteer in Education District 6. Madison McKay from the state of Oregon. She will be serving as a primary literacy resource volunteer in Education District 5. Matt Hauser from the state of Michigan. He will be serving as a primary English literacy resource volunteer in District 1. Patsy Grant from the state of Florida. She will be serving as a primary literacy resource volunteer in Education District 5. I, first and last name. I, Grace Lee Sumner. Promise to serve. Promise to serve. Alongside the people of country of service. Alongside the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I promise to share my culture. I promise to share my culture. With an open heart and open mind. With, With an open, open heart and, and an open, open mind. mind. I promise to foster an understanding. Promise to foster an understanding. Of the people of country of service. For my Vincent, Vincent and the Grenadines. Grenadines. With creativity. Cultural sensitivity and respect. Cultural sensitivity and respect. I will face the challenges of service. I will face the challenges of service with patience, humility, and determination. With willingness and determination. I will embrace, we will embrace the mission of world peace and friendship. The mission of world peace and friendship. For as long as I serve. As long as I serve. And beyond. Beyond. In the proud tradition. In the proud tradition. Of Peace Corps legacy. And Peace Corps legacy. And in the spirit of the Peace Corps family. In the spirit of, of the, the Peace, Peace Corps family. Past, present, and future. Past, past present, and future. I am a Peace Corps volunteer. I am, am a Peace Corps, Corps volunteer. volunteer. Congratulations, everyone. On behalf of the U.S. mission in the Eastern Caribbean, it is my pleasure to congratulate all of you today. I am so impressed by your dedication to service and your willingness to embrace new challenges. And I commend you for choosing to make a real difference in the lives of our friends, neighbors, and partners abroad. First, let me express my heartfelt gratitude to each of you, our Peace Corps volunteers. Your commitment to service and to building bridges among nations is both honorable and invaluable. Your efforts help to create lasting partnerships and foster mutual understanding, which is vital in today's interconnected world. I also want to thank our local partners and national governments. Your unwavering support and collaboration are crucial in making our volunteer efforts successful. 
Together, we are creating stronger and more resilient communities. U.S. engagements in this region come in many forms, but having volunteers work at the grassroots levels brings a personal and human touch to each of these joint efforts. The connections you will make will enhance the impact of our collective work and help build trust and understanding. You are arriving here just weeks after Hurricane Burl. The destruction and suffering caused by that storm, which I witnessed on the ground, highlights the need for solidarity and community action. I encourage you all to be a true partner with the communities where you will be working to understand what the needs are and to help restore life to normalcy and to tackle the challenges that we have together. The Peace Corps Eastern Caribbean program has a rich history, beginning operations in 1961. The Windward Islands were among our first and longest standing partners worldwide. Together, Dominica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Grenada have hosted over 250 volunteer literacy teachers who have worked alongside local educators. Your two-year volunteer placement puts you in primary schools to support literacy with the aim of strengthening youth development and climate resilience integration. After today, all of you, our newly minted brilliant volunteers, will move into communities in four countries, all of which I visited and love. Take the time to learn about the communities and the people you will serve for the next two years. By late August, you will begin working with professional educators in schools to prepare for the new school year. There is no more important work than educating the leaders of tomorrow. You will play a key part in setting young people up for success with their skills and ability. A few tips, be optimistic about the future, be proud of your work, and share the best of the American people with your new friends. Thank you all for your dedication and passion. I am so proud of you. Now go out there and do some meaningful work. Thank you so much. Representatives of the government of our partner countries will now deliver remarks on this occasion. I now invite Mr. Cyrus Sipal, Acting Deputy Chief Education Officer for Instruction in the Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology, and Vocational Training to make his remarks on this occasion. Thank you very much, Madam MC. Protocol having been established, let me say good morning, everybody. On behalf of the Honorable Minister, Sean Edward, he first today because right now as I speak, he is addressing um, the ancillary staff of all the schools from District 5 to 6 right now in Viewport. Um, also on behalf of the Parliamentary Secretary, Dr. Prosper, the Policy Department and School Supervision Department of the Ministry of Education, I take the opportunity to welcome you to an exciting phase of the education system in St. Lucia. There is a pedagogical evolution that is taking place right now in St. Lucia. Yes, a transformation is taking place and what a time for you to have been chosen to contribute to this transformational process of the educational experience of St. Lucia. This partnership with Peace Corps and the government of St. Lucia, as we were told, that has been formed from 1961. Guess what? It is still going on strong because it is good. Normally in a relationship, in a partnership, if one is not experiencing success, you tend to break up. But the fact that we are here for over 50 years, it means that both sides are experiencing success. And this is why on behalf of the government of St. Lucia, I want to tell Peace Corps today that we will continue another 50 or more years with you. We say congratulations indeed. Those who have gone before you have set a foundation and left a legacy for you. This legacy is not defined by what they have left for people, but what they have left in people. And this is the mantra with which we operate by. And let me also tell you that the action research model 
that you follow the Peace Corps volunteers and the Peace Corps Association. This has brought to us the success that we get every year and every two years of the cohort. And again, let me tell you that, yes, COVID did affect our learning, what we call now we suffered a learning loss, but then we do not speak the language of the victim. We speak the language of the responsible. We don't stay and dwell on what has happened. But what we do, we take on the initiative as my um, model leader, Martin Luther King, he said that you have to be prepared to amend the status quo in order to arrive at the desired outcome. And this is what I want to introduce to, to an atmosphere, a culture of learning, a culture of experience, a culture of innovation, a culture in St. Lucia, where you will not simply be there to just simply understand the status quo, but you will be willing to integrate and feel the pulse of St. Lucia, feel the culture of the Ministry of Education, because the evolution I'm, I'm talking about, I have 30 seconds left, okay. <laughs> The evolution I'm talking about, and then as you come, I'm sure you have been told about it. We had, we have the um, pre-K um, um, program that we have started in Saint Lucia. You have heard of the transformation of the education um, education act. You have heard of the the transformation of the education sector development plan. You have heard of the. Um, program and Mr. Gordon is here, Rafa Gordon is there of OECS, okay, and then um, with the Pearl program, you have a series of events taking place, and if you don't know about that, ladies and gentlemen, you better log on to OECS and find about all the Pearl initiatives taking place in St. Lucia, this transformation, and then what is getting me even more excited now is the one where we have, we are going to transform for secondary school into full-fledged TVET secondary schools, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, that's just a tip of the iceberg of what you are getting into in St. Lucia. So since my three minutes is up, on behalf of the Minister of Education and the Government of St. Lucia, once again, we welcome you to an exciting phase of the education system of St. Lucia. Thank you very much. And let me walk in the excitement of St. Lucia's presenter, all of the things that he said about Pearl and all the rest, we are in it too. And we are just, and we are building a brand new school for the Center of Excellence in Technical Vocational Education also. This morning, I really didn't hold notes because I'm a Pisco mom. I have, I have the opportunity of being a Pisco mom to more than 30 Pisco volunteers. And I did that for a period of 14 years. Um, so Pisco, I, I, I had a family emergency this morning, and I said, let me just take that time to come. That's how much it means to me. So on behalf of the government of Dominica and the Ministry of Education, I welcome you and I congratulate you. We have worked in the success of this program. In my community, we had a person who, who was teaching our young people to box. We actually had one of these people taking part in a boxing tournament for OECS, that's Pisco. We have seen environmental clubs. We have seen libraries being set up. We have seen all kinds of things. But most of all, we have seen our literacy rate rising to 94% in Dominica. And I am sure, I am sure that what the Pisco volunteers contributed to this success, we should not let it go unnoticed. And even as our literacy is improving, we are also looking into other fields. So therefore, for us in Dominica, I urge you to use the opportunity as you do literacy to incorporate some of the things that we are looking forward to. We are looking forward to dealing with climate change. So even if the passage is about climate change, we want everybody in Dominica to be educated about the effects of climate change, about climate justice also. Because in my community, one hour of bread and I need $4 million. Children need to be educated about these things. And we need to find a way to incorporate every subject with some of the things that we are looking forward to. The digital, the digital transformation. This is the way we are going. We do not want to go back to pre-COVID days. So I'm saying I know what can be accomplished through PISCO. Because even as a young teacher, even as a young principal at both primary and secondary level, I have enjoyed it and I have seen how much it can contribute. I am happy for you that you chose Dominica. You, you are the best one. I can tell you. <laughs> you are the best one. So as you learn and as you travel, 
and you may not be able, you may not be allowed to drive, but there's so much to learn. Make sure you enjoy all of it. Now you're coming from your homestay experience. Please don't go back to your American style. I see some people, like, while they're at the homestay, they try the cocoa tea and so forth. But as soon as they move to their own home, they go again back to instant cocoa. Continue making the coconut tea. Con the cocoa tea. Continue talking the, the quail. And do not be afraid if you see a person coming to you with a machete in his hand. He's just going to his garden. All he will say, I, I say that to my peaceful volunteer. All he will say is, good morning, bonjour. All you have to say is, bonjour, and move on. And I have seen relationships relationships been built. I have seen people went back with husbands and wives, and I have seen people went back if with even the, their cat. They didn't even want to leave their pet behind. That's how strong it become. And the only sorry thing about this Pisco thing is that as soon as you start enjoying the program, two years is up. So which means that you have very little time to, you have to make it happen because at first you're a little homesick, and when it's time to go home, you do not want to go home because you don't want to leave your program. I admonish us to those of us on island who will benefit from these programs to ensure that we have a plan for continuity. Because sometimes after the Peace Corps volunteers leave, then some of the things drop. We need to have a group to continue. Otherwise, it will just be a season. We do not want a program for a season. We want a program for a reason. God bless you. And on behalf of the Ministry of Education, I am very happy. And I hope I see you at your school sometime. Thank you, thank you, Minister Alfred, for your kind words. Mr. Aaron Francois, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Grenada, I welcome you to the podium to deliver your remarks. Thank you very much, Madam Chairperson. And standing on the protocol already established, I just want to say good morning to all of our distinguished guests. Let me join this morning in on behalf of the government and people of Grenada, the Ministry of Education indeed is extremely grateful and happy to welcome four of our volunteers and the other volunteers across the region, four other islands, the three other islands, this morning on this very auspicious swearing in ceremony. Today, we, we want to also join in, in telling the, the, um, the volunteers that they are coming in and, and they are now in a very exciting time in Grenada. Uh, we are right on the hills of Carnival. In fact, the, the season already started and you are going to get an experience that you have never seen anywhere before. Um, additionally, I just want to um, add to, to what the comment that the um, the, the, our, um, let me get a name, Anna, uh, made about our sports joy. So it is not the Kirani, well, Kirani, of course, is, 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 is our star, but we have just picked up two bronze medals, uh, Anderson Peters and Lyndon Victor. And so we are, we are, we are very happy and we are very, we are celebrating. The, 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 um, the, the performance of these great athletes that, that we had at, have at the, at the Olympics. I want to also join in, in the comments that my uh, uh, education officials made from Dominica and St. Lucia. Uh, so we are part of the OECS uh, education strategy. We are following a common education strategy for the region. And our government, of, uh, the, the government of Grenada has placed high priority on education. We are very concerned about the outcomes, the educational outcomes for our students. And we have, uh, as you heard, since 1960, uh, been welcoming PISCO volunteers to our show. In fact, I had the opportunity to work alongside a PISCO volunteer years ago when I was a primary school teacher. So I know what the feel is, and I, and, I, and I know how much that resource, the resource that the PISCO volunteer brings, impacts our system, our education system, and the experience that we get from those, the resource that they bring. And so we in Grenada look forward to working along with you, volunteers, 
And certainly we want to commend the PISCO um, organization again for continuing the collaboration with us as we strive to develop our education system and our students in particular, because that is what it's all about. Education, all our efforts in education is aimed at improving the educational outcomes for our students. And so I want to wish you all the best. Ex uh, enjoy Grenada. Uh, involved with the community, mix with the community. You are going to enjoy it. Trust me. And um, at the end of the day, I want to wish you every success, a rewarding experience. And again, congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Francois, for your generous remarks. I now invite Honorable Curtis King, Minister of Education and National Reconciliation from St. Vincent and the Grenadines to deliver his remarks. Thank you very much. And standing on the protocol that was accepted, good morning to everyone. Indeed, it is always a pleasure to be last. You see, the less. <laughs> so I adopt all that was said by my colleagues from across the Windward Islands. I only add though that the Peace Corps, you are coming at a time when once again we are in the rebuilding process, the recovery process, because there was a time when you had to suspend your program because of the impact of the COVID-19 disease. Now, we have not suspended the program, but you're coming at a time after our not so good friend, Beryl, has basically caused tremendous challenge to our system. Nevertheless, though, the fact that you're here and the fact that we are welcoming you is a testimony to our resilience and determination to always move one step further whenever we are faced with these challenges and challenges that will confront us as we go on. Let me congratulate the two trainees, Mr. Summerhill and Ms. Williams, kind of like the name is Kylie Williams, <laughs> yes, for choosing to be here. I mean, they could have gone elsewhere. They had, I believe, so many other options, but they chose to volunteer their service to a very important and noble task, that of educating our people. And for that, I want to sincerely thank you on behalf of the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I also want to pledge the Ministry of Education and National Reconciliation support to your effort. I know that you're in a different society from that of your own, but I ask that always you keep an open mind. There are going to be many opportunities for you to advance your own personal development, and you should not miss those opportunities. Similarly, I know your efforts are going to be significant in helping us in our trust forward in terms of transforming our education system. Finally, don't take it as any disrespect, but I have to leave for a next activity. But certainly I would want to wish you all the best throughout your two years. And you're really standing on the proud legacy of those who came before you in the Peace Corps movement. And therefore, I have no fear in my mind whatsoever that you are going to leave your own footprints and footprints that would be indelible, mar indelible marks on our own context here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So once again, welcome, and we accept your, your choice for being here, and we extend our support and pledge our continued support in your future endeavors. Thank you very much. I would like to quickly highlight that as the program and training manager here in St. Lucia, I had 
the opportunity and the privilege to work very closely with these seven volunteers over the last nine weeks. And I must say that I have been very impressed and encouraged by the level of resilience, the level of determination of each one of them. They came in with various reservations, some anxieties, including anxieties of moving into host families with total strangers, anxieties of missing family and friends back home, anxieties about the long and rigorous nine weeks of training that they had to endure, and even anxieties about the heat and the mosquitoes. <laughs> but what did they do? They worked hard. They persevered. They pushed themselves out of their comfort zones. They built relationships. And they connected, connected to each other. They tapped into the support of each other the support of staff, the support of their trainers, resource teachers, current volunteers on island, and not to mention the support of their host families. And they persevered, and today they are successful, and they have proudly taken the pledge to commit two years of their lives to work alongside our teachers, our community members to advance literacy development as well as youth development and climate adaptation activities in their communities. So, esteemed guests, I would like you to join me once again in congratulating the 94th group of Pisco volunteers in St. Lucia. And I'll just add to Mr. Sipal's comment about the long-standing partnership between Peace Corps and the government and people of St. Lucia. He said over 50 years, and he's correct. But I want to be more specific. It is a 63-year partnership. So I welcome you. I welcome you, EC94 volunteers, into this partnership. And I wish you the very best in your service. We will be here as staff, volunteers, etc., to support you throughout your journey. And I trust that you will continue to demonstrate that resilience, that determination that you did during training, and to build upon the work and the legacy of those who came before you. So once again, sincere thanks for taking this bold and noble decision and for all that you will contribute in your communities. Thank you. At this time, our receiving schools would want to thank you as well. They are very excited about the prospects of working with you. And so I would like to invite Mrs. Venetia Muris Alfred, acting principal of the Lalge Primary School, to give some remarks on behalf of our partner students. It is a great honor to, to stand before you today on this momentous occasion. I'm the swearing-in ceremony of the Peace Corps Court 94. And uh, I have seen firsthand, because I was present at Model School, and I noticed how the volunteers, I saw the enthusiasm, I saw the students, how they were anxious to come to Model School every single morning, because they were, whatever activities that was being done, they enjoyed it, and they made learning 
fun for them. So I want to thank you volunteers for this opportunity with our students. And on behalf of the partnering schools, we are excited that you will be assisting us in our schools. Today, we celebrate not only the commitment of you volunteers, but also the spirit of collaboration and the dedication to education. Literacy is the foundation upon which we build our future of our students. And I was privileged in that I noticed, I read your, um, your goals, the goals that you volunteers are actually going to be impacted our schools. And literacy is the, is, is the utmost. And I also noticed that the capacity building, especially for our community members, our parents. So I see that our communities are going to be getting something very, very important. And so we look forward to this. So all the partnering schools, I speak on behalf of you and say that we are excited for this opportunity and your presence is here. It signifies more than just an assignment. It represents a shared vision of empowering our young minds and enriching our educational landscape. So as you begin this journey in St. Lucia, Know that you are joining a community. You are not just coming to a school, but you are coming into a community, and we are looking forward to having you. The schools, the education, the parent-teacher, the, the businesses in the community, in fact, we are really looking forward to your presence. So thank you for your dedication, and on behalf of all the schools, we want to congratulate you. We want to congratulate the Volunteer Court 94, and we, we are telling you that we are looking forward to great things with you as our literacy resource teachers. So thank you so much. And at this time, we would like to recognize some very important persons who played, we were all important, but who played a very critical role in the volunteers' experience during training. And these are no other than our host families. So let's give them a round of applause. And I would like to invite our country director, Mrs. Sodorova, to assist us in distributing the token of appreciation to our families. And I think it's fitting that I read the words that we would like to express to our families. In recognition, in grateful recognition of the warm and generous hospitality that you have provided to our Peace Corps volunteer, by opening your home and your hearts to our volunteers, you have played an instrumental role in the volunteers' service and have made a substantial contribution to the ties of friendship and understanding. Do you agree, volunteers? You All right. So, host families, please come up as I call you. And again, from the director, Mrs. Mary Darius. Mrs. Darius hosted our volunteer header. <laughs> Miss Joanna St. Clair. Miss Joanna hosted our volunteer Diane. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Bernadette Pierre, Pierre. Oh, volunteer Matt, Miss Ruth St. Clair. Mm -hmm. 
host to volunteer Patsy. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Marvel. <laughs> well, should I say more? Host to volunteer Madison. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Plant. Okay, host to volunteer Hunter. <laughs> and finally, Miss Mildred Joseph. Jed? <laughs> okay, so now we have reached the fun part of this segment. And this segment will be, I will hand over to our new volunteers who will demonstrate to you some of the things that they learned during the rigorous nine months and weeks, excuse me, nine weeks, it, it seemed like nine months, it seemed like nine months of training. So without further ado, I hand over to you, volunteers. I super away, I super away. Monev Shah A. Tabli. Ms. Ye, Madame, Bonjour. Nous voulons remercier Saint Lucy pour travailler et puis puis quoi et puis nous qui ca volonté. Nous bien content par ta vain que vive à some épicé Jean Paul là. Nous kai continue pour filer des i sakini lantewe en nous espoisement they even need to aid a say timamai la upon le ik equi ek potage antivon a. Nuka poamet ki nukai katine upon kiltiu e amem ta a mutueu sanu. Nupasa espeye wesade lane salani punu. Nu M A Saint Lucy, Saint Lucy Bell. Apoisan nu kai chante.
Today, we are filled with immense gratitude and excitement. This moment marks the end of one chapter and the beginning of another new and profound one. We are honored to be here at the threshold of our Peace Corps service in the beautiful island nation of St. Lucia. First and foremost, we want to extend our heartfelt thanks to Peace Corps staff and trainers. Your dedication and unwavering support has been nothing short of extraordinary. From the very first day of orientation to the countless hours spent preparing us for the challenges and triumphs of our service, you have been our guiding lights. Your commitment to this mission and to each of us as individuals has been truly inspiring. To our remarkable resource teachers at Laguerre Primary School, our respective community liaisons and the current Peace Corps literacy volunteers in St. Lucia, we offer our deepest appreciation. Your expertise and patience have been instrumental in equipping us with the knowledge and skills we need to succeed. Your insights into the culture, language, and everyday life here in St. Lucia has been invaluable. You have taught us not only about the logistics of our roles, but also about the heart of our communities, helping us to understand and respect rich traditions and values of the people we are about to serve. We also want to extend our profound gratitude to our host families. Your warm hospitality and generosity have provided us with a home away from home. You have opened your hearts and your homes to us, sharing your families and your culture in ways that have deeply enriched our training experience and our lives. We will carry with us the lessons learned and the memories made during this time throughout our service and beyond. And we will never forget the nuns at Kubaril for their incomparable graciousness. You are our first introduction into St. Lucia, and we are ever grateful for the loving, and welcome, the loving welcome you provided. Overall, the training we have received has been rigorous and comprehensive, but it has also been incredibly rewarding. 
Each day has been a testament to the collaborative spirit and dedication of everyone involved in the program. We are now ready to step into our roles as literacy resource volunteers with confidence, knowing that we have a solid foundation to build upon. As we transition from training to service, we are excited to apply what we have learned and to contribute in meaningful ways to the communities we will be joining. We are eager to immerse ourselves in the local culture, to learn from the people, and to work together to address the challenges and celebrate the successes that lie ahead. In closing, we want to thank each and every one of you for your support, guidance, and encouragement. The journey ahead will undoubtedly be filled with both challenges and rewards, but the lessons we have learned here and the support from all of you, we are confident that we will make a positive and lasting impact. Thank you once again for everything. We look forward to the incredible journey and experiences and opportunities that await us as we continue on this journey together.